Hello and welcome to Databricks. Today we're going to be covering the Payments Lake House, in particular featuring the ISO 20022 standard and how to create that format and then do analytics on top of it as well. So to start, we're actually going to just talk about the Lake House, which is an open architecture designed to house all of the different workloads that you see here above. So for the banking and payments industry, being able to stream all the payments information the initiation information, fraud information, card information, as well as other uh, banking standards into the lake house and putting streaming, data engineering, and data warehousing workloads onto the platform. In addition, a lot of the payments information that you'll see typically has a lot of PAI information. So Databricks lake house platform covers um, the governance in terms of uh, PAI masking, fine grain governance, access control, lineage, and all this is managed within the same platform. So it's simple, open, multi-cloud, and we'll see examples of this as we go through the demo. To give a little bit of background on what we're gonna cover today, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the ISO 20022 standard. And this is a new banking standard, which essentially allows banks to now share data, whether it's local, regional, international, in a structured format that speeds up the operational processing as well. To give a little bit of context, previously, when any financial institution wanted to conduct a payment, the remittance information and the actual payment transaction information were either separate or, as you can see on the right-hand figure, in the case of ISO 15022, the payment or the remittance information was essentially left in a freeform text, which makes it really difficult to send partial invoices, to understand the status of any particular payment, because a lot of these fields, if done incorrectly, would have no validation um, and is very hard to parse uh, and get an interpretation for. So this made it a lot more difficult, again, to, uh, to have transparency into the process and into payments and partial payments, et cetera. So the ISO 20022 standard aims to solve a lot of this. As you can see, this is now an XML standard, which is a lot better for data processing. So if we take a look at you know, the, the structure of this demo, what we're going to show in this really simple demo is assuming that you're getting a lot of your payments initiation information and you're clearing in settlement information from your systems, it could be digital APIs, it could be payments ERPs, we will show how to structure this, put it into an XML format, specifically this new ISO format, in your cloud storage. And then subsequently, if you want to do any kind of analytics, uh, including forecasting of trends for your payments, understanding what the percentage of failures were for your payments, in general, any transaction monitoring summaries, we'll show a dashboard that captures a lot of this, including geographic information, which you might want to know uh, from all the payments in your organization going in and out. So this is the basic structure. And all of these tables will be Delta Lake tables landing in our lake house. The main feature here is Unity Catalog, which allows you to do data governance. Um, as you can see here, understand lineage, understand how to encrypt your data, especially those sensitive data fields that are innate to, to payments information. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the first piece of the demo, which is streaming into the ISO 20022 data lake. So this is gonna feature the streaming capabilities in particular. So what we're gonna start with is the notion of a catalog. So with Unity Catalog, which is our data governance solution, essentially there's a three, three layer namespace. The payments uh, designation here is essentially what's gonna house, it's a top level container, it will house all of our databases. So we've created this payments catalog. And as you can see here, highlighted by blue, we're actually gonna take the raw information and land it into the ISO 20022 format. So we've got a little bit, little bit of staging, ingesting our files. And as you can see here, I've got three different pieces of information in my raw systems. One of them is just a, a group header for all of the transactions or invoices. The other one is original group information and status. And then the last one is transaction information. So this is your payment information, remittance information. This is all coming from raw parquet files. And I need to combine all these different disparate pieces of information 
into a single XML file. So across all these payments, as you can see, all I'm doing is joining this data together and I'm saving into XML format. So all of the XML libraries are attached to the cluster that I'm using for all this information, and it's going to land into this table, which is an XML format called bronze payment cleared. So this is gonna represent the bronze data that I will ingest later to do any kind of PII masking or golden summaries on top of that. And you can see here that this is you know, highly structured information. It's, it's quite nested. There are hundreds of fields here, including PI information such as name, email address, phone number, address, et cetera. So we're gonna need to you know, handle some of the, the restriction and access control for this data pretty carefully. So this is my, my raw data. Similarly, this was actually a clearing data, a clearing and settlement data that I've just ingested here. For another different payment type, there's many different standards as part of the ISO standard. Another one of the, the structures is essentially payments initiation information. And I, I am ingesting both of these to show the life cycle for payments. So there's not just one initial payment um, that's, that's made you know, throughout the process. There's typically multiple invoices, multiple pieces of a, a transaction involving the, the parties and counterparties, involving you know, splitting up the payment. So we did want to highlight some of the complexity there. So what's happening here is we're ingesting all raw data using the binary file format. Previously, we had parquet files. This is a raw binary file. And again, we're just saving that information into a final um, payment initiation table. So this is another bronze table that has that initiation. So this is the start. The clearing would be that ending information that I can use to actually perform summaries. In the next part of the demo, I'm essentially refining the data. So if I take a look at, let's say, some of the refinement for the payments initiation, this is my raw data, which has been landed into a table. And essentially now I can start to parse out that highly nested information. So if I want to look at initiating parties and look at addre postal address information, if I want to pull out email addresses, again, and created timestamps, as well as geographic information. I'm doing all of that here. And because I have PII information, I'm able to use built-in functions, encryption functions, to mask this data depending on which group is reading it. So for data scientists, I actually want to mask all this data. For whoever's running a job, an automated job, to actually transform this data, I wouldn't need to apply the same level of, inf of information since it's not queried interactively. But for any interactive data science users, as you can see here, I'm using the built-in AES encrypt functions. And this is gonna allow me to essentially see the email address if I'm an admin. So I myself can see the state, I can see the address, as well as, the e as, well as email addresses. But this would not be available to other end users interactively. And Unity cat Catalog captures this view and all this access control information. And this data science group is applied on the account level. So across any workspace that's created, this same group can be used, propagated from identity providers. So that's an example of the silver data. And lastly, I have my golden summaries. Databricks now has Photon, which is essentially a full MPP engine, which allows us to do any data warehousing use case. And what I'm doing here is essentially creating those business aggregate levels of information, such as location summary. So if I want to understand, for example, how many payments or frequency I have per state in the US, this map will give me uh, different, different tiers of payment frequencies, right? So you can see here um, in the Northeast, I'm having um, highest, highest levels of payments that are likely happening from mobile payments or brick and mortar stores. Lastly, I'm looking at payments information to understand how many payments are initiated and grouping by when they were created. And lastly, I want to understand what kind of failures that I have across all of my payment network. I have my initiation information, and then I have my clearing information. And so that's going to allow me to figure out which, which payments were cleared, which one had reversals, et cetera. And so really to summarize all this information, I'm going to go into a Databricks SQL dashboard. So the Databricks SQL interface is essentially a SQL-first interface where 
I can create these visualizations directly off of the Delta, Delta Lake tables that I've created. So those golden summaries are all sourced here. I can see my failure rates. I can see how many payments are initiated, the average time to clear any specific payment. And then lastly, the type of settlement frequencies that are in my data. So there's lots of different types that are part of the clearing information. Some clear weekly, some clear monthly. As you can see, most of them clear on a daily basis. But with any of the tables that I've produced, I can create these visualizations. If I want to connect Power BI, I can do the same thing. And lastly, I can query a lot of this data interactively with REST APIs or Python connectors, et cetera. But this starts to give you an idea of the monitoring capabilities, specifically for payments. And as I said before, any of this data can actually be um, shared out among institutions. And to give an idea of, of, of how the data discoverability works, I saved all of these tables into my payments catalog. So if I look in the payments catalog here, take a look at default, I'll see all the tables that are produced as part of this process. So as I enrich my data, as I join it together, we'll take a look at one of the tables that we've done here. So we'll actually take a look at, uh, at one of these goal tables. So if I look, for example, at my failure summary, my failure summary had to take into account both the initiation data as well as the clearing data. And so if I click on lineage graph, I start to get a sense of where my data originated from, how many tables were there, and you know, what tables are downstream as well. So I can click on the summaries. I can click on each of the silver tables, the intermediate tables, to get a sense of how the data was parsed. And as you can see here um, in the raw levels of the data, we'll see that, that kind of raw structured or uh, sequence of structs from the raw XML files as well. Lastly, if we take a look at things like schema or permissions, you'll start to see which users have access to which data. So for example, my own manager in this in scenario, let's say my, uh, my manager at the bank, um, he will have access, all access to on the catalog level to any object. So for this reason, you see that um, the permissions on this specific summary are granted to, to Henry Hyde. Lastly, I wanted to share that silver table that was created earlier, which actually was a view on top of this base table. So if I take a look at this silver initiation payments table and take a look at the lineage, then my downstream data was actually the initiation table that was masked, whereas the base was the full data set. So if I take a look at that initiation data and look, for example, at the details, you'll start to see the view definition. And you can see view up here as well uh, in terms of which kind of object this is with all that base 64 AES encrypted data. So there's a very granular level of information here. I can understand things like the lineage. I can take a look at which notebooks specifically reference this data set. Um, which are the silver refined uh, or refined tables that were produced as part of the, the notebook workflow. Uh, the last thing I'll show, outside of Databricks SQL, all of these capabilities were enabled by Unity Catalog. Again, all the lineage captured automatically. And what actually produced this lineage was a Databricks workflow. So Databricks workflow is nothing more than an orchestrated job. So if I take a look, this is actually the job that generated all these tables. So I'll click on tasks. The list of tasks was essentially that saving into the ISO 20022 standard. Then I enriched my data, my initiation data, enriched my clearing data, and lastly, I had a, a script or notebook which created all those gold summaries, which was the last gold notebook that we saw. So I could sync this up with Git. In this case, these notebooks were synced in a specific repository that I ran this entire job off of. So the top level job is the succeeded job, in which case all these different tasks were succeeded. The dependencies are defined here within the tasks. And if I want to add any other dependencies here, that's really easy to do. Um, and repair and rerunning is also simple for any specific track that may have failed. So hopefully this gave a good sense of how to build the payments lake house with this new standard and the types of things that Unity Catalog can solve for as you're going through this.